This is the I'm Possible Project Show, where we interview real people who have achieved incredible feats in the face of overwhelming odds, showing that impossible is just the state of mind and that anything is possible. I'm your host, Joshua Rivadol. Today, in episode 11, Dear Self, I talk to Danielle Hark. Let's jump right in. Danielle is a new friend of mine. She is a writer, freelance photographer, photo editor, certified life coach, all around hustler, it seems like, you know, really, really good stuff going on. And her work has been featured in some pretty outstanding publications, Psychology Today, Dr. Oz's You Beauty, The Mighty, Upworthy, lots of good stuff going on there. She's also a mental health advocate who lives with depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. And she also founded the Broken Light Collective, which is a nonprofit that empowers people living with or affected by mental illness using photography. Danielle, it's so good to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. You know what? Why don't we just jump in? Because you're you way more than that biography. I mean, I got a chance to know you because you are in an anthology book that I put together, uh, The Impossible Project, Changing Minds, Breaking Stigma, Achieving the Impossible. You are one of the 50 authors. You tell an amazing around thousand word story about your life, but you don't even have to dive into all that. I just kind of want to hear about you. Sure. Well, what do you want to know? A little about my maybe mental health background? You tell me whatever you want, whatever you <laughs> think people would be curious about. Tell us about your middle school crush. Tell us about living in Jersey. <laughs> tell us about LA. Tell us about whatever you want to tell us because we're just getting to know you. Sure. I've struggled with depression and anxiety on and off throughout my life, you know, pretty much as far back as it goes. But yes, middle school was among those times. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but um, I was um, diagnosed in college, which was um, but, um I, um, I, since that time have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, the traits of OCD, um, ADD, PTSD, um, and more. Um, but I have, um, yeah, I've done a lot of different things. As you said, uh, a writer and a photographer, a photo editor, and, um, I, I love doing all of those things and, um, I've trained in life coaching and I just, I, I love being an observer of life and um, writing about it and photographing it. And I started the nonprofit Broken Light Collective um, that empowers people affected by mental illness using photography. And I love, um, I'm a wife and a mom to two, two wonderful girls who are about to turn two and seven. And that is a wonderful and challenging and rewarding part of my life. Um, and um, those are many of the things that fill my days. <laughs> wow. And what else do you want to know? You know, I think that's enough, but I'll, I'll ask you. I'm, I'm, I'm the question asking guy <laughs> on the show. I'm, I'm laughing here. Uh, I'm just teasing. But you know, I'm kind of curious because you, you list all these different things that you do. And even like a mom, even... Uh, wife, and then career stuff. But at the end of the day, to me, it seems like you're a creator. You create, even though you said, I like to observe, but you observe and then create. Where does that come from? Where does that creativity come from? Is that like a childhood thing? Is that something you found in college? Is that something that's always been there? Like, what is that, what is that f- for you? That's kind of how it's happened is kind of throughout my life, I found my creative voice. I don't think it happened all at once. I think I've always been a creative person, but it's been an ongoing journey. Um, I've been interested not just in photography, but in um, throughout my life, um, poetry and and painting and um, collaging and singing and theater. I loved theater in high school. That was such a great way to express myself and to escape reality. When I was going through a really challenging time, I was really struggling with depression um, in high school, and I just didn't, I didn't know what to do or how to express myself. And um, so I think that that's um, creativity in general is just such a wonderful way to express yourself in just all of its many beautiful ways and forms. Yeah, I, I, I so agree with you. And, and I, I mean, I lived a very similar life in, in the sense that, uh, well, I'm from New Jersey, but uh, 
<laughs> the, the, the fact you're laughing, I'm like, everybody laughs when I say I'm from New Jersey, even people from New Jersey. Um, <laughs> but you, you're you certainly not a passive observer, even though like I like to observe life. You have comments on it. And you found, and, and as a kid, you found your tribe. You found a place where you could kind of have a bit of a compass. And I found that too. I came out of my show, uh, theater. I did it professionally for a bunch of years in New York City and, and regionally. And so that was great. And I, you know, I'm doing different things, obviously. But theater was like my life preserver. And it sounds like it was that. And then it mushroomed and grew into other kinds of creativity, which, which I love. And uh, I, I think I read that you're from Milburn, New Jersey, which is Paper Mill Playhouse, which is just, I'm just making mm-hmm. a side note here. And that's, that was always one of my, I never got a chance to perform there, but that, that was one of my, being from New Jersey, that's our big claim to fame, I guess. One of our mm-hmm. biggest, yeah. uh, theaters or what have you but um well creativity creativity i'm thinking about this because this show is about overcoming obstacles you know turning impossible to i'm possible uh making lemonade out of lemons and so i'm curious about your obstacle or your obstacles and so i'm gonna ask you about that but i almost want to like ask it with a caveat and the caveat is what did the obstacle and how did you overcome the obstacle through the lens of creativity, like, do we, you know, if, if so, if you could answer that, but I'd like to hear about how creativity and the photography, the theater, the, the life code, everything that you do or that, that you've accumulated along the way, as I, I probably should put it, how did that color the obstacle and then overcoming the obstacle? I hope that's not too poorly worded of a question. Does that make sense? I think so, but I think it's been different kind of just throughout my life, as I said, just as I've, you know, there's just been so many obstacles throughout my life. And I think creativity has helped me through so many obstacles all the way from when I was a child and just helped me develop that voice. Because I think my, um, I had a grandmother who was a painter for a short period of time. She wasn't a painter all her life. She was a painter for a short period of time. And, and she taught me to paint um, when I was I think eight or nine years old. And I think I was going through a difficult period of time, you know, not making friends or feeling awkward and different. And I didn't really understand it at the time. I didn't know I was going, the struggles that I was going through. Painting helped me overcome an obstacle. Um, and, and, and looking, you know, looking back on, you know, one of the paintings that, and on that, you know, one painting that I made during that time, you know, and I had, I had a, a line, you know, kind of drawn down my face and I had one side was kind of shadowy and one side was light. And I look back and I think, oh, that's it's very bipolar of me. But well, before I knew what, you know, 20 years before I knew I was bipolar, you know, it just, it, it was very interesting that, that it, at that moment in time, creativity helped me overcome an obstacle that I was going through at that time where I was feeling very alone and very isolated. Um, I mean, not photography, painting, painting helped me in that moment. And um, at other times, poetry helped me, really, really helped me when I was really depressed. Um, poetry helped me to uh, explore what I was going through. And um, film, I studied film. I was a cinema and photography major at Ithaca College. Um, experimental film helped me to explore. Um, my father um, died of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and I made a film um, while he was very ill. And um, it helped me overcome, I wouldn't say overcome that obstacle, but what I was going through at that time, it really helped me to explore it. So it's, I'd say time and again, creativity helped me to explore what was going on, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, and to explore it and to kind of fight through it and um, to ground myself during those moments and during those times. And um, in recent years, it's definitely been um, photography, and that's what led to forming the Broken Light Collective. This idea of uh, uh, exploring, you said exploring, exploring what was going on with the thing at eight or living, dealing with learning about your bipolar diagnosis and then borderline and anxiety, depression, you explored I think my experience in my personal life and what I've seen from other people, uh, even though I have, I've had creativity in my life for a very long time, I didn't really learn how to harness that to help myself until around age 27, 28, which is only like five, six years ago. And so, so, uh, what most people do is they don't explore whether consciously or subconsciously they avoid no judgment on that because avoidance it's comfortable. It's, it, 
dealing and exploring is can be scary because even those are, those aren't going to be things that we want to see. I don't want to hear about my depression. I don't want to know about that. That's how I thought in the beginning. I, I'm not this. This isn't me. And then I like the creativity slowly kind of trickled in and was like, all right, dude, you got to explore this. You're going to explore this. Explore it with your writing because I'm a writer, you know, and explore it with playwriting, music, whatever. Explore it with, you know, creating something to help other people. And so you've done that. You know, you've explored, you know, consciously or subconsciously. And I think, you know, that's just to be commendable. That's courageous to not avoid, to to do the uncomfortable thing. And in fact, you have, you have used it to help other people. And you mentioned the Broken Light Collective. So tell me, about, tell us about that because to, to take something in your life that's been a difficult thing for you, a difficult obstacle, uh, something to live through, and then to turn it on its head and say, I'm going to, I'm going to spin this straw into gold. I'm going to be a modern day Rumpelstiltskin. I'm going to help other people. That's a beautiful thing. That's one of the most beautiful things a person can do for them, for, for one another. So, so if you would just tell us a little bit about Broken Light Collective. Thank you. Um, after the birth of my first daughter, I went into like a really severe depression. It was a two year depression where I was barely leaving the house. And photography really helped to save my life. And um, I was working with a therapist at the time who I really trusted. And she really helped me to get in touch with that and and get kind of back into using photography as a therapeutic tool. And it really became kind of, it was it was a mindfulness tool because I was so just stuck in my head. And it, it so I was kind of becoming more present. And it was a way to express myself. And um and really, yeah, really explore what was going on. And that was the time where I was diagnosed with bipolar. I really didn't get my bipolar diagnosis until recent years. And so um, photography helped me through that time. And so when I realized just how powerful this was, how just incredibly powerful this was, um, I, I did want to share it with other people. And so I just decided, I decided that I wanted to post the online, like my photography and my story that I was going to post it online. And I did it anonymously at first. And so I just created this website, Broken Light Collective. And I said, if anyone else wants to share their photography and your stories, you know, you're welcome to send them. And it just started like that. It just started like, come on, share, share your stuff. If you want to share your stuff and I'm going to share my stuff. And it just grew from there as a website. And it just, it just grew and grew as this WordPress site. And, um, and people from around the world started sending their their photos and their stories, and I think we just it became this safe place where you could just go and just feel less alone. Like I totally get that, you know. I see that that image, and I just you know I can sympathize or empathize, and I've been there. And um, and it grew from there, and just uh, eventually it got to the place where it became a nonprofit so that, that we can just span because it, it's, it was fighting stigma and it was raising awareness and, and it just became a mission. You know, it just, it was really exciting to be able to, to do this work and be able to help people and, the, and, and share this, um, this gift that photography was to me during this time as I started to heal, to be able to share that with other people. So um, now there's over 50,000 people from 181 countries. At Broken Light Collective, and um, we've had live gallery exhibits and pop-ups, and I've spoken a bunch of places across the country and did a TEDx talk, and it's, it's really exciting. I just, I love this work. It's really exciting because it's, it really has changed my life and my mental health, and um, it's just been really amazing to share. So really encourage anyone, um, if photography has been helpful to you, or if you love photography or art, um, to come to the Broken Light Collective site or the Facebook page or Instagram and, and just to join us or to submit it work if it's something that speaks to you check that out because i'm looking at the website now and it's a good looking website and lots of different ways to connect and connect through art connect through storytelling what a, what a badass idea you know just just the way that you went about it uh really just trying to help yourself and help others and then it just mushroomed and exploded into this thing that's got hundreds of thousands of people across the the country and the world. I mean, what you did, you, you put all this stuff together, your mental illness, your photography, your creativity, your want to help. So you put all these things into one basket and you created something not just for yourself, but for other people. And that's, 
that's outstanding because it's 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 like when when there's no door in life a lot of people are like we'll look for a window or when god opens a door he'll open it i'm like no when life doesn't give you the door you create a door make a door you know how to make a door you made a door you made a door and and the door opens into helping other people helping yourself doing good work being creative i mean you tap into so many things with this it's 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 you really took took these things that you struggled with and you you brought them to the forefront and you said this is me here here I am. And, you know, who else is quote unquote weird like me? And if you are, you're safe here. And <laughs> like beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Well, I have a way of summarizing things in odd ways. So <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> um, so what is one thing in your life that people said was impossible, but but you made it possible? Where, where, where did you make that door, as I mentioned before? Impossible to possible. Where did you prove the haters wrong? If oh, at all. There's been a lot of them. Yeah, there have been a lot of them. I mean, the, you know, you know, Broken Light being one of them, you know, starting a nonprofit. But I think even just being a mom and like having a, like, I can't say a normal life because <laughs> my life is right. not normal. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, I guess that, yeah, like being a mom would be one thing because, you know, some people might not think that being bipolar and having the challenges that I have that I could or should be a mom, but, you know, I fight hard to be a mom and, and to give them a, a wonderful life and and to be the best mom that I can be. And um, hopefully I'm <laughs> succeeding at that and, and giving them a, a, as wonderful a life as possible. Yeah. And being a mom is like one of the hardest jobs ever you know that that anyone's ever like i'm gonna be a mom i'm gonna get pregnant i'm gonna do that thing called pregnancy and have the thing have the child come out or whatever c-section what have you that's hard in and of itself but i have stepkids who are my kids and i came into it at a, at a, at a you know late in the game and so i'm getting it now as a parent like it's like eight jobs all into one and for so for someone to say <laughs> To you now you are you're already living and managing you're not just like leaving it alone you're living and you're managing the bipolar and then like as if you would be like selfish to say like oh i'm gonna have kids and i have bipolar and it's just all about of course it's not all about you it's about the kids now you know and and i'm gonna do it in spite of or or or, or as an asset too like you you can you there's things about these quote-unquote illnesses that you can use to educate your your children and uh i mean well, you just I, I try to be an example i mean it was hard. It was a hard decision to um, to come out about having mental illness publicly and to and to share my writing because I I had my I had a lot of my articles written for years before I decided to publish them and to go public about it because I wasn't sure how it would affect them. It didn't have to do with how it would affect me. I didn't mind the trolls or the you know negative press or any of that. You know, I just I wanted to help people and most of all, you know, I really worried about how it would affect my daughter. My second daughter wasn't born yet, um, but I, I worried about how it would affect my daughter. You know, would the other parents, you know, like, oh, are they not going to want, you know, are they going to find out and would they, you know, see the article and nothing to post and not want their kid to come over for a play date or have a sleepover when they get older? But you know what? I decided it was more important to to set a po- be a positive role model and set an example and say, you know, I am trying to help people. I'm trying to help myself and I'm trying to help other people. And you know, and that's the the example that I want to set for my children. And so I went for it, and I'm I go for it every single day, and and that's what I'm going to keep on doing, and that's the example that I'm going to try to set for my kids. I love it. You're you're mic dropping people on a daily basis by being a good. <laughs> mom putting the hater aid down i love it i love it i love it so i'm gonna have a little fun right now this is our little quick fire round uh and it's Uh-oh. just a, a couple of quick <laughs> questions no worries there's no right or wrong answers just fun 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 right. just so we can have a, a a good time and smile because some of these topics aren't you know super fun whatever uh but but we're just gonna dive right in so Daniel, Daniel, what 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 is your favorite word mm, i think i have two one would be mummy, as my as my little one calls me, mummy, <laughs> and um, create or creativity, of course. Mummy, your child is British. Yes, she's British. It what took her two least... years to say mummy, so I'll take mummy. it. Mummy, <laughs> what is your least favorite word? Hate. Hate. I keep thinking people are gonna say no. Like that. That's like my least favorite word, no. but that's my own coloring. Hate. Yeah, that was my. <laughs> our last guest was, was something of that nature too. Um, 
What is your spirit animal? <laughs> I have so many. I love animals. Well, my number one would be my 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 eighteen year old pup Audrey. <laughs> so Audrey is animal. your spirit animal. Yeah, but I love like birds and foxes and like I don't know. I just I love animals, so I just have too many. I'd say <laughs> okay. I'd say fox. I'd say fox. You're like you're like a spiritual Horror. cat lady. You just taking everybody. I, like yeah, old I have so many. I'm like the hoard of the animals. I hoard the animals. <laughs> <laughs> I want them all. I want like a little seal, like a like tiny baby seal. I don't know. I want them all. <laughs> like, how about an owl? I want an owl. Oh my gosh. I, want, I think so many. Spirit I think your animals. spirit animal is Old McDonald. That's that's where I'm going <laughs> with that. Because they're not farm animals. <laughs> well, okay, um, Old McBotanist. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that word means. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you terrible at? Ouch! Oh gosh, what, what everything. T- I think I'm terrible at everything. But that 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 that's, does not <laughs> sound true. Self deprecating me. Can I just say everything? <laughs> no, you can't say everything because you're good at lots of stuff. You like, like I don't know. You could say like the Macarena or like making my kid eat chicken nuggets. Or if you say everything, How about cooking. I'm cooking. I'm I'm terrible at cooking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our friend can microwave. Hopefully, I hope. I hope it doesn't matter. Um, I can microwave. Yes, I'm I'm good yeah. at microwave cooking. I got gotcha. you. I got. I've got my moments. Sometimes it's 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 really hit or miss, <laughs> but the microwave never misses. So, um, <laughs> a working parent. Um, last one, and there's a few others, but this is one I'm going to end on the at least the quick fire round. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say to you as you enter or as you get kicked out? <laughs> uh. <laughs> this, this way, way to the art ther- <laughs> this way to the art therapy room dig it i love it i love it michelangelo's <laughs> there giving out classes <laughs> um <Awesome. laughs> cool that's that is the end of our quick fire round thanks for being such a good sport <laughs> our spirit animal and yes i love it so uh spirit animal hoarder that's gonna go on my list of diagnoses now like that yeah that there's probably something in the dsm about that <laughs> So tell us, tell us, what are you working on right now? And it could be Broken Light, could be anything, could be our book, mm-hmm. it could be whatever. But what are you working on right now or what have you been working on that you're super proud of? And tell us about it. I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> ah. I, am, I am working on three things right now. One is a memoir that might never be finished. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that <laughs> the title? Elusive memoir. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> I am so I'm, I'm working on a book that I'm very excited about, but I am very I'm working on it slowly. Mm-hmm. I'm a broken light, working on expanding it. Really excited to keep going with it and um, see where it goes, and continue working on the online gallery and continue adding to it every week. And um, and I'm hopefully in the process of starting up a new business and um, mm-hmm. with the theme of comfort. And I will just leave it with that. And, um, and, um, but I will make sure to tell you so you can post about it in the coming weeks because yes. hopefully you will be able to post about it in the coming weeks. I would love that. Cause I'm a big fan of comfort, you know, yeah, uh, pillows, all about- food. <laughs> yeah. well, you're going to have to keep us, keep me and keep us posted. Cause that sounds cool. It sounds interesting. Um, will. if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to connect with you, broken light, they want to get comfortable. If they want to see whatever you got going on, what's the best way that people can get in touch with you? The best way is through, um, I have lots of websites and social media sites. And, um, so my yes. website is daniellehark.com. It's my name, Danielle, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E, Hark. H A R K like Hark the Herald Angels sing, um, and I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook, you can just look me up, Danielle Hark, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Danielle Hark. Same spelling, yes. Danielle Hark. Um, I love Instagram. It's so fun. Um, I don't do it all the time, but I do it pretty often, and I love to put. That's where I put my photos and stuff. Um, and yeah, Facebook is Danielle Hark Photography. I didn't say that. Um, so I put some of my, that's where I put my articles and I put, um, so I'll be updating about the book. And um, I also put some of my photography and stuff there. So yeah, Facebook and Instagram are my favorite these days. Uh, I want to thank you again, Danielle, for coming on the show. This was a lot of fun. Thank um, you so much for having me. It was lots of fun. 
You've been listening to The I'm Possible Project Show with Joshua Rivetal and guest Danielle Hart. I love sharing stories and how to turn impossible into I'm Possible. If you want more inspirational stories, our second and third books are in pre-order right now. Changing Minds, Breaking Stigma, Achieving the Impossible, as well as Lemonade Stand. Both contain powerful stories of overcoming tremendous odds. When life gives you lemons, squeeze, add sugar, and pick up a copy of The I'm Possible Project. www.iampossibleproject.com slash pre-order. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're more than a community. You're part of the I'm Possible family. Until next time, sending you lots of love.